Hello, this is Hans van der Kwaas, Senior Lecturer at IG Delft Institute for Water Education. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the white box tools for analysis of LiDAR point clouds. In a previous video, I've demonstrated how to install the white box tools and add them to the processing toolbox. White box tools can only work with LAS files, so I prepared one in a previous video uh, that I'm adding here. And uh, when you load a LAS file to QGIS, it starts converting it to another format. Therefore, you see in the status bar uh, how far it is with processing. And meanwhile, it shows you the outline of the extent. And it cannot read the projection, so I'm adding the projection to the project and the file. Now you see it's loaded. So this is our LAS file. And by default, it uses the classification of the points that it finds in the file. This data is from AHN3, open data from the Netherlands provided by uh, PDOC, and uh, that has this classification. And when you have the PDOC services plugin installed, you can get access to open data from the Netherlands. And to get a bit of context now for this point cloud, uh, let's load the actual aerial photograph at 25 centimeter resolutions through this plugin. So we're looking at the center of Rotterdam, city in the Netherlands. And this is an interesting area because we have a lot of strange shapes here. This is the marked hall, the station black, and uh, the Kubus Woningen, or the cube buildings. Um, and that's a good way to test uh, these algorithms and see if we can get these shapes out of the point cloud. Let's have a look at the white box tools, and there we find LiDAR tools. And under LiDAR tools, there are a lot of different tools that we can apply to point clouds. And we're first going to look at the LiDAR Hillshade tool. And we need to read the LAS file. You need to point at it from the disk because it will not read it from the layers panel. And we keep the azimuth and the altitude of the sun uh, at the default and the search radius at 1. And we define an output file. It will be a, another point cloud that we call Hillshade and which will have the Hillshade values as uh, RGB data in the point cloud in the last file. It's done. So we can now drag from the browser panel the Hillshade uh, point cloud. And when we load it, it starts converting it. Meanwhile, we can see the extent and I add the projection. And you see now in the status bar that it's converting. It's almost done. And now we can see the hill shade uh, for each point. If we zoom in, this becomes clearer. And now we see nicely the shading of the objects. And we can inspect uh, these cube buildings and uh, the pencil tower, which has this uh, roof. It shows different directions. So then we can clearly see the hill shade. We can adjust the point size. And the points are visualized here uh, with squares, but you can also uh, choose uh, circles. So this gives a nice result. It's not interpolated, so these are individual points that uh, make up this hillshade image. And when I zoom in, you can see the points. Now it would also be nice to see the RGB colors. With the LiDAR Colorize tool, we can sample the colors from an image, like from this aerial photograph with the RGB colors. Let's save it as a GeoTIFF. Go to Project, and then Export the map to image. I leave the default so it will take the map canvas extent. I click save. And I change the file format to TIFF. And let's call it RGB. We can load it. And it's georeferenced. So if I remove the original aerial photograph, we still see the picture. And we're going to sample the colors from that using the LiDAR Colorize tool. So I open the last file, the original one. And I use the RGB GeoTIFF. And I'll save it to a new last file that I call clipped RGB. 
The original file does not have the RGB channel. The AHM data does not uh, collect the RGB colors. Now I'll drag the new last file to the map canvas and it processes. I set the EPSG to the projection that we use here in this project. And the file is almost converted. And here we see our nice dots, almost like a, a painting with all these dots. And if I switch off the background, then you see that it has uh, voids where we don't have uh, enough points, where the point density is low, and that's where the water is. But we see that it uh, took the colors. If I would have saved uh, the aerial photograph at a higher resolution, we would probably have uh, a better image here. But this gives you an idea of sampling the colors. But uh, these voids there, where the water is, uh, these are all channels in the city, they need to be uh, removed. In order to do that, we need to have polygons that cover the area with water. And for that, we can use the Quick OSM plugin. And with Quick OSM plugin, we can download features from OpenStreetMap. So the key that we use here is uh, natural. And the value is water. Although not much here is uh, really natural, but that's where we have to look for uh, the waterways. And we use the polygons here because we want the areas. So I run the query and now we get the water polygons from OpenStreetMap. And you see that uh, they cover these uh, areas that have uh, a low point density. I think it's better to dissolve it before we proceed. So it will be one polygon. I can keep it as a temporary layer because we also need to project this to the same projection as uh, the point cloud. So I save the features to a shapefile, call it water, and set the projection to the one of our projects. Click OK for the transformation and here we have the water polygons. And now I can use from the white box LiDAR tools a tool that is called Erase Polygon from LiDAR. So I use an input, which is our original LAS file, and it finds here our water polygon file, and then I can define an output LAS file. Let's call it Clipped Without Water. And in this way, it will remove all the points from the point cloud that are in those polygons for water. It's done. Let's drag it to the map canvas. It's processing. I set the projection and check the mask and see what the result will be after processing. And here we see the result with very sharp edges uh, where the water is. And uh, that looks very nice. So our original LiDAR file has uh, classes, but we can improve the classification by using classified buildings in LiDAR. But then we need a building polygon file, and we can also get that from OpenStreetMap. So I use here as a key building, and I want all the buildings, so I leave value open. And for the layer extent, I choose the boundary of the point cloud, and I want the buildings as polygons. I run the query, and now I have all the buildings in this area. And you can already see that uh, there's some mismatch with the uh, orange uh, red colors for building that we have in the point cloud. So what uh, the tool will do, the classify buildings in LiDAR tool, it will uh, classify the point cloud points that fit uh, in the polygon to building and the others to uh, other classes to no building. In fact, it will be a Boolean uh, layer. So in this tool, I can load our uh, last file, but you see that our buildings are still in the wrong projection and need to be exported first. I'm not sure if Whitebox tools can uh, deal with that on the fly, but it's always good practice to use uh, layers with the same projection 
in these tools. So now they are exported. And let's go back to the dialog. Load our clipped without water NAS file. And there we have the buildings in the correct projection and save the output. And let's call it buildings.las. Starts the reclassification uh, process. It's done. I can drag buildings last to the map canvas. And it starts processing. I set the projection. And there's the result. And if we compare it with the uh, original classification, we see that uh, there are some uh, differences, there's some sharper borders here. You could also filter the LiDAR classes with the Filter LiDAR Classes tool. And then you can give the uh, classes that you want to exclude, for example. You can uh, find uh, the numbers of those classes in the styling panel. Here you see how they are uh, coded. That's uh, standard coding that is used for LiDAR. And there are many interesting things that we can do with these tools and I just want to highlight one which is the LiDAR rooftop analysis tool. And uh, you see that it has quite some parameters and the nice thing about Whitebox is that it's very well documented. So here on the website whiteboxgeo.com you can find the user manual. They've also started just a YouTube channel so uh, subscribe if you want to learn more about uh, these tools. And here you find all these LiDAR tools in the menu and there's the LiDAR rooftop analysis. And here you can find what all these parameters mean. So it gives you an idea about the settings and it gives you the uh, source code. And you see there are other LiDAR tools that are well described here. And you can see how you can use these tools also in uh, Python, for example. So here I use the clipped without water last file and I use the buildings layer I keep the settings at default you can play around with that to get different results but let's just see what it does with all the defaults the output in this case will be a shape file with the roof segments so the algorithm tries to find all the roofs within the building footprint and the point cloud and it will save all these uh, roof segments to a shapefile. So it's done, let's close the dialog and have a look at our roofs file. I need to set the projection. And here it is, it has classified all the segments of roofs in the building footprint and here we have the church, the Lauenskerk, and we see here that uh, every roof segment here is uh, nicely segmented. The same for the library and the cube buildings, although there is some uh, noise there, maybe uh, that can be reduced by changing some of the settings, but uh, it gives quite some uh, good results, and especially for the church that looks really amazing. And if you open the attribute table, you'll find that each segment has a maximum elevation, a hill shade, a slope, and an aspect. And that's very useful information for all kinds of uh, purposes. So we can use that now to do some uh, styling. Let me also put back the RGB in the background so that we have some uh, context. And I'm going to use here a graduated symbol. And for value, I'm going to choose here the uh, hill shade. It was one of the fields, and I use a grayscale. And I just uh, classify it. And here we see the result. And let's zoom in on the church. And here we see uh, the different directions of the, the hill shade per uh, segment. And we can also see that here for the cube buildings and the library. Now when we choose uh, aspect, we can have the orientation uh, according to the compass. 
And that's also interesting, that's in compass degrees. So 0 and 360 are north and 180 are, is south. And uh, this is useful, for example, if we want to uh, know the orientation of a roof, roof segment, which can be important for uh, solar panels, for example. And you saw that it also has the slope of the roof. So the combination of slope and orientation will give you information about the performance of uh, solar panels. You also see the results for the cube buildings and the library. Until now we have been looking at points, but it would also be interesting to interpolate it to a digital surface model as a raster. So I choose here our clipped without water loss file. I choose an output grid resolution of 50 centimeters. I keep all the defaults here and I'm going to save this then as a GeoTIFF that I call DSM. Let's run it. And it's quite a sophisticated algorithm that is optimized uh, to get digital surface models out of point clouds. There are other algorithms here uh, provided. Uh, you can see them here on the right, like uh, LiDAR IDW interpolation or LiDAR nearest neighbor gridding. You can also try those things and compare different results. But in this video, we'll just have a look at uh, the result of the LiDAR digital surface model algorithm. So it produced the output, but it gives a warning about the projection, which we will fix later. And uh, let's zoom to the extent. And we see here the elevations in uh, grayscale. And uh, what is useful here is to uh, render it as a hill shade. And uh, QGIS can do that on the fly. So in the layer styling panel, we can choose here the hill shade renderer. And that will just give a very nice hill shade impression. And now we can see a lot of details here. We also see uh, some artifacts of that uh, interpolation. And we can uh, smooth that a bit by changing the resampling to bilinear. And here you see then the result. Also put the zoomed out to bilinear. And now we get a very nice smooth hill shade uh, raster of our area of interest here. And we see a lot of very nice details in the trees. and But we also see that it has some issues with uh, uh, the area where there are no points, like the, the water that we filtered out of the layer. Let's uh, add some extra shading using the Terrain Shading plugin. It adds some tools to the processing toolbox. And I'm going to use here the Ambient Occlusion tool. You can also try the other tools, it's really great stuff. And here we see that our DSM indeed doesn't have a projection, so it's always wise to add that first before proceeding. Especially uh, raster analysis of uh, elevation uh, needs a proper projection. I keep here also the defaults. And let's save it as uh, ambient occlusion and the output will be a GeoTIFF. Can we see the result? Again, a remark about the projection, so just set it again. And here we see that uh, ambient occlusion. It gives a lot of uh, detailed patterns here. And we see the tramway track at the station. You can really follow in detail in the trees. And uh, what we can do is blend this with uh, the hill shade layer. Let's do add these details now to the hill shade by using multiply. And there we see the result. It's a very nice metallic style uh, raster that we get. And now we get really a lot of nice details on the roofs. Here we have the church with the church tower, and the library, and the cube buildings. So very nice results. Now let's have a look at these point clouds with the 3D view. So this is the RGB point cloud that we had before. And uh, if I use the 3D view, then I can uh, rotate the landscape, and there we see it popping out. And here we have our nice points with the textures from the RGB 
and there are the cube buildings, the pencil, the library, the station and the marked hall building and the church in the background. It will do the same uh, if we will use the, the hill shade, the one that we generated on the points, so this is not the raster. So in this video you've learned how to use the LiDAR tools from Whitebox tools and I think that's a great addition to QGIS 3.18 with the point cloud support and in combination with the LAS tools it will give a lot of power to QGIS to deal with uh, point cloud data from uh, LiDAR.